just record. Yeah. Because grace is really a, a, a tricky topic, and I, I actually been avoiding, uh, I've been avoiding to speak on grace. Actually, the topic of been two, three years, you know, since I started sharing in the church, and because I would, I would not call myself a, a preacher yet. Yeah, I'm just sharing my what I've learned. Yeah, I'm not preaching today. I'm just sharing with past two, three years of sharing. I don't think I've ever touched on grace. It's all about faith. <laughs> I've mostly, I've mostly touched on faith. Yeah, pray that you know God will guide me and that we will also learn. Yeah, we will learn together on the grace of God. Amen. Yeah. Now, see, church, I've been raised uh, a Christian household all my life. You know, as soon as I was born into this world, you know, I was already a Christian. I was already in a Christian family. Yeah, father a pastor, mother is also a pastor. Their ministry. You know, I, I've 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 grown up, grew growing growing up in the church. Yeah, really helps in my journey with God. Yeah, when I really accepted Christ in my life. I mean, you know, whenever you're born in a Christian family, doesn't mean you're a Christian already. Yeah, you need to accept Christ so that you will be a, a Christian follower, a Christ follower. Doesn't mean you're born in a Christian family, you're automatically saved. That's what I meant. Yeah, doesn't mean that we're automatically saved. Uh, salvation. We need to learn God's grace. We need to accept Him as our Savior. And so, uh, you know, growing up in a church really helps. But growing up, you know, of course, as a child, you know, growing up, not every Christian child is good, right? <laughs> I believe most of us is also, you know, we have been bad before, right? I was bad. So, I don't know if it's, that's a word, a good, bad. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm out there uh, cussing at people or out, out there robbing, murdering. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that bad, bad. You know, I lie. You know, we lie all the time. Yeah, don't be, don't be so holy today. Yeah, <laughs> we lie. We lie most of the time. And you know, have you ever heard somebody said, you know, I just, I just saw the white lie, right? We always lie. But it's still a lie, okay? It's still, it's still the same. It's a lie. Lie means a lie. But you know, see, for some reason, in our hearts, and one of the, the fundamental problem that we have in the Christian faith and also in the world today, that is because the levels to our sin, you know, in the level to our devotion and the levels, you know, how many scriptures we post on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we categorize people on levels of how they are with God, from God. Yeah, because somehow we think that, you know, we become the measuring stick of God's goodness. You know, somehow we, we thought to ourselves that we are the measuring tape or the measuring stick to God's goodness. And, and somehow we think that he has temperature or to be the measurement, you know, for how all other human beings are viewed by God. Right. You see, God will not bless you for that. Yeah. Just because we don't do it. God will not bless you. And, and see, because I am the standard. I am God's standard. You know, we, we thought of that our whole life, our whole. But somehow at one point, you must have thought like, oh, I dress better than her. I have a better house than them. I have a better car than them. I have a better job than them. You know, I, I believe somehow you must have thought of that, right? And, and you came today because you feel like going to church. Yeah, because you, you came today because you feel like going to church. I'm not saying don't come to church. Yeah, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm not saying do not come to church, but I'm saying with, with a purpose. And your purpose is to make yourself better than somebody else. And, and you know, you know how people, times, yeah, and, and some, sometimes we, we might dress up a little too much because we want to impress other people. We want to come to church, and, and you, that, is, that, is not, um, that is not right because you come to the church because you want to worship God. We want to gather together to worship God, not oppress other people, right? We, 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 you know, that, that, that's, how, that's how we view our lives sometimes. Sometimes we are the main character, right? That is the trend on TikTok. Main character. We feel like we're the main character, and, and when we're worshiping, we don't look at God, but we're actually looking around, looking at other people. Yeah, that is not right, church. We come to church because we want to worship God. And see, we all need Jesus. Uh, and you see, many of us in this room feel like what other people uh, do is really who they are. And if, I, and if, I, if they did it somehow, and them. Yeah, sometimes we measure people according to our standard, not God's standard. 
You getting the picture here, church? Yeah? You and I, we both see Jesus Christ. Now, this morning, let us get into it. Yeah? Let us get into it. I would say my first point, my topic today is grace. And I just want to give credits to, to Pastor Mike for this sermon. I've learned a lot from here. And I just want to share with us. Yeah? I don't, yeah, I don't take credit for all of this. And I just want to share with us that we will also understand the grace of God. Yeah? So my first point here, I want to say grace is amazing. My title to be giving you bonus points and everything, yeah? So first point, grace is amazing. This is the thing that a lot of people don't understand. It's because we often say amazing grace, yeah? We sing that song, amazing grace, but why is grace amazing? Have you ever thought of that? Why is grace amazing? Like, it is not to me amazing grace. What does it mean to do something amazing? And I look into it, the word amazing you know, it's talking about things that are abstract and over the top. Yeah? I begin to think about it, and, and God said, when it's amazing, it's not average. I just want to ask how many of you, American Ninja, if we don't know what that show is, it's basically about people training for years. They, they have these obstacles that they have to go time button. Yeah, they have like a time limit for them. Yeah, so um, that, is, that is American Ninja. And I've watched this show for so long. Yeah, uh, you know, I, for, for years, people, there's even ladies on it. And it always amazed me how they're able to finish all those courses. Yeah, they be hanging around. They you don't you you cannot fall from that course because there's water, and once you fall, you'll be disqualified. And so it always amazes me. And you see, they've been we do it, even the fi the starting line we cannot even finish the starting line, <laughs> because not average people can do that. These people they've been trained. Imagine yourself hanging from a a, a piece of wood, you know, above twenty feet from the ground. Imagine you hang that, and that is what amazing about it, yeah? See, when it's amazing, it's something that the average person cannot do. God said, most of my people in the world, and they definitely don't understand amazing grace. He said, people in my church, he's not talking about people outside. God is talking about people in his, you and I, we don't understand amazing grace. You see, God said, just think about how many believers come into houses of worship today. Shame, condemnation, and a fear, failure. How many people sitting in this room this morning, or those of us watching online right now, are perfection driven? How many of us believers live depressed and discouraged because they feel that they can never measure? It's an amazing grace. We will not be any of this that I've mentioned earlier. I've seen, I've seen people who, you know, who wants to excel in life. They're very perform, performance oriented and, and perfection driven. They want to, you know, they want their performance go up, you know, skyrocket and everything. And these people, and also those who live depressed, I'm not, I'm not judging people who are depressed uh, by surrendering to God and, and accepting God and, you know, understanding amazing grace because, you know, this is what's happening today, church. People who put their faith in, in Jesus. And this is what's happening every day. And, you know, because we don't understand amazing grace. Because somehow you feel like it by God. Somehow you feel like it's your paycheck. Or somehow how you dress or how your house is always clean. How your car seats you. And you think that's why God loves you. See, you are in a place right now. Believing the lie that the enemy wants you to believe that somehow after you receive God's grace, now you have, to. somehow we feel like, you know, I've received this grace. I've received this. So I need to do everything good. I don't want to make my father, because we're afraid that once we do something wrong, God will abandon us and God will kick us out of his house. And get God, will. And that is why we have generation of people who have gone to church religiously, but they're empty. And there are children who doesn't want to go to church. That's fake. That's not real. See, a pastor explained it like this. He said, grace, grace is like this. It's like you're in a boat, right? You're in a boat, and there's provides oars, yeah? Oars for you to row your boat, yeah? And that's grace. God gave you oars. That means God gives you grace as you keep rowing. And you go against the current that is pulling you to hell, we, you are going to make it to heaven. 
And this pastor said that, you know, grace is, I mean, enablement to keep on rowing. And a lot of people would agree with that. But then I would know that you don't understand grace because that will be amazing you. And you, because you were the one that's been rowing your boat, you were the one that, you know, pulls you towards the other side and not to the currents that's pulling you to hang. And, the, and this pastor, he said, I, you know, I pulled a hundred pastor and I asked him, what is grace? See, church, he is and not what grace does. Grace does empower you to live in a new, new life. Grace does empower you to say no to the temptation that you used to bottle who had control over your life. Grace, you know, but you see, I want you to write this definition down. Grace is the unmerited and favor of God. Like there's nothing that, you know, you did or you do that, that, you know, does not allow God to put his grace on display for you. Somehow when we get this, doing the work. But God is the one that provides. Amen? God is the one that provides. And you, you know, when, when he provides what we, I just want to, I just want to break down these words. The unmerited, undeserved, unearned kindness and favor of God. I just want to break this down, understand better. So my second point here is grace is unmerited. Let us read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Let me read that. Well, let me read it for you. Uh, it is uh, King James Version. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you have now been extended grace. Yeah? And that not of yourselves, and I love how it tells you, you know, it is not because see, that is true faith and it's not yourself because, because then you would take credit for it, right? And he say it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, there's a lot of boast, but there will be no boasting in heaven. See, God, he's after you. He wants a relationship with you. You know, no matter how many times you messed up or how many, you, and, and look, it says that, you know, true faith, that, that by grace, are you saved through faith? That is not of yourself, but it is the gift. You see, this should be framed to somebody right now because, because there is no way that we could keep the laws that we set for ourselves, right? You know, you know. Let's be honest. Like for my seat, of course, I still eat. And sometimes I just, you know, I just okay. This week, I, I, I don't want to take, I don't want to take sugar, right? I don't take sugar. I, I've said that many times. Let me be honest with you. I've said that. I've lost a few kgs, but I still, and I still need to uh, do more. And, you know, I've set these rules for myself, but how do I end up buying boba? <laughs> Ice cream, my favorite. You see, we are not able to keep the laws that we set ourselves, let alone that God. See, I just want us to understand here, grace that is unmerited is because God still accepts you. God still takes you, still loves you because his grace is unmerited. There is no point score that you need to achieve to, to, amen? When we are not able to keep his law, all we have to do is repent, come before him, ask for forgive. I'm not, this is why the, the topic on grace is very, very, very sensitive and very tricky because I'm not saying that this is a license for you to sin. But when you break, just know that God still accepts us. And you do not need, uh, you know, when you break God's law, you do not, you do not need to, to, do, to do something good. You know, might come to church and say, God, I'm sorry, I've, uh, I've wronged you. So um, how many offerings should I give this morning to cover that? It will not be covered. <laughs> Your good deed still loves you. His, because his grace is unmerited. His grace is not an exam, church. Our life is God will not merit you. We need to understand that. And so because it is not because of our rowing. Yeah, the example earlier is not because of our rowing. So we are the oars for you to row. Amen. You see, we don't, you know, we don't merit the grace of God either. So once you receive the grace of God, you get to experience another level. I've, re I, I've, shared, I've shared my life testimony that, you know, my, my family's life. God has really been so faithful in providing, in protecting. There was one time uh, 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 my dad was away. 
So my mom has to take care of me and my brother. And so she was, she was learning driving at that time. I'm sorry, mom, I'm, I'm giving this secret out. Uh, <laughs> and I have a license, yeah. But she, she still can drive, but she drives manual. So at that time, we have a car. So she was, you know, fetching us from the school. So, you know, really that hard. And it, 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 because that time, the car, you know, uh, not, not cannot uh, automatically lock the door. So my mom forgot to lock the door. So my door wasn't that strong enough, and I, I closed. So when my mom, uh, we reached to this junction at the roundabout, she was turning because our house is at the other junction. So we have to go to the really thank God for seat belts. If not today, I won't be here. I, the door swung open when she turned because at that time, she, the door just swung open and, and I was shouting, ah, Bobby, <laughs> swung door open. But then once she turned, then the door was not open again. And I tell you, church, that happened two times, two times times i still remember i don't know if shama remembers or if he was in the car but it happened the, the, i mean it happened the next day i'm not talking about like after a month a week or whatever it happened right after the next you know when okay, my mom's like okay close the door properly and i close the door and i don't know what what happened to that door it still doesn't close properly but you know god really needed to stop uh, at that road but you know it, it's a it's a roundabout so she was panicking because you know she was still <laughs> learning how to drive she, until we reached our house junction and, and the door was you know was like hanging like that it was it was a hard close but after that when when it reaches the junction it, it suddenly was just praying i said lord lord <laughs> it happened twice and i really you know god's protection he was really faithful in our life and not just so we need you know, when, when we receive God's grace, we can understand another level of His faithfulness. See, God is not holding us what we have done in college or what we have done 20 years ago. He's not holding us hostage, but you, ourselves, are holding ourselves hostage. hostage. And because of this, you think that you need to do something good. Yeah, you need to, you need to donate this. You need to get because you want to get God's grace. Somehow you think that you need to work for it. But God is saying, can we, can we move past this? I, I've, can, can we move on from here? See, the Bible says, any man that is in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold the old. We don't understand the scriptures, right? We always read that, read, 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 but we never understand. God is not holding us hostage. He's not someone that is, you know, that keeps his grace. What you have done 10 years ago, he has forgiven you. He has paid for that. He, he has accepted you. He takes you in. All you have to do. And this brings me to my third point, which is grace of God is undeserved. Somebody say grace is undeserved. You don't deserve it. Person, even though you're a pastor, even though you're more humble than, you know, even though you're, you have a big house, or, or even though you're more generous, generous than the other person, even, you know, even though God's grace, we need to get that. We need to understand, put that in your head. Yeah. Look at what Romans 3 chapter, Romans 3 verse 24 says. It says, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The word grace actually in the Greek is the word haris. H-O-R-A-C word before it was a spiritual, a spiritual word. So God chose to use this word to be able to show us what grace, what it mean in Greek, you know, it means that it always referred to a superior giving, a benevolent gift to an inferior. Yeah? So whoever who does business, you know what a broker is, right? A broker. So a broker means a, a middle person who takes in the things and paid for it before. So, for example, th there's this superior, there's this somebody. Uh, let us take a phone, for example, right? He manufactures phone, yeah? And because I know who needs it, I know somebody out there who needs the phone. So I'm, I'm going to take the phone first from this many, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to take the phone. But I'm also going to pay for it in full. I'm going to pay for the phone before I give it to someone. It's like this. He has paid for our sin. He has paid for us in full. So he can give his grace. To God is our broker. 
He has paid everything in full. He doesn't pay in installment. Yeah. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back uh, uh, because so I have to come back later. I'll pay for you in installment now. Yeah. No, God said I pay in full. God doesn't die on the cross every three months. <laughs> he doesn't six months in a year. No, God died one time. He paid for our sin one time and one time only. So he can give us his grace that we don't deserve. This is amazing, right? God's grace is amazing. We don't deserve his grace. And, and we don't merit the kindness of favor and his goodness. Because we don't deserve you know, a lot of testimonies of how, how God has given them a second chance of living when they don't deserve it. We don't deserve God's grace. My last point here today, church, grace, a lot of people get messed up on. But Romans chapter 11 verse 6 says, And if by grace, then, I, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace. Then is it no more grace, no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Let me understand you too. And let me help you to understand this. Because I also, you know, when I read this, I was like, what, what is this? <laughs> it, it's either free or it's earned. And many of us don't want to accept that. The grace of God is a free gift for us. Like, God, you, you won't stop blessing us. God is saying it's free gift. It's not a gift if you have to pay for it. I'm pretty sure we understand what gift means, right? Of course, we Malaysia gives. Just imagine you being at your own birthday parties. Like, you know, your friend coming. Oh, my God, Christina, we thought about you. Here you go. And so you open the gift and you're, oh, thank you. Thank you. Seven. And so your friend's like, okay, that'd be 1,530 ringgit and 20 cent. That's your gift. You have to pay for it. No, because it's not free if I have to pay for it. If See, you know, you need to get this. Grace is not free. It's not a gift, which the scripture says over and over. It says free gift of God. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Amen. What can you do with the gift? And what's the only thing you can do? I mentioned that earlier. Receive it. Receive the free gift of God. And that's why God is coming to you every Sunday and he's trying to give you the gift of grace. And you see church, grace, bonus point, grace is Jesus. That's all we need. The Bible says in Revelation, he stands at the door and knocks. Whoever hears me, he stands at the door and knocks. God is knocking at our door every Sunday, every day. Let, let's not put every Sunday because that would be like a Sunday goer. Every day, God, is, even though we have done something that is not of his, that is breaking his law, he still comes back and he's like, hey, I'm here. Can you let me? And we keep saying to God, like, no, I, I've done this. I've done that. And God said, it's okay. I paid for it. You just need to accept. Grace of God is unearned. Definitely, we don't deserve it. He is coming to us, church, and all we have to do is accept his grace. Accept, understand that his grace is amazing, and it's not because of our works. It is not because of what we have done. It's not because of the good works that we did last, last like you saved the kiddies, that, that, that doesn't justify your God's grace. God gives you that grace. It's a free gift. We don't have to pay for it. We just need, I just, I just hope that we realize that the grace of God for you is amazing. And that grace is unmerited. The grace of God is, is, is undeserved. Of God is a person. And that is Jesus. God has pulling us. You know, God has been pulling us. He's been, he's been pushing by his grace. Whenever we feel like we have re hit rock bottom in our life, and somehow we managed to get up is because you've done, not because you, you decided to go, you know, to, to wake up and to do something good today. No, because God has given you his grace and the grace of it to earn it or marry thing. You know, I, I, I really want us to understand the grace of God this morning, church. I, I still have some things to share with us, but we will get. Yeah, because it is a series. It'll be a sh very short series. Yeah, as as long as my father not around, uh, they'll be back next month. So I'll be sharing on the grace of God this series, and I hope of what God's grace is and what what what, what grace is now what God grace does. Yeah. So this morning I just want us to take that in 
that, that God's grace is unmerited, undeserving, unearned. And that grace is pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just want to thank you so much, Lord, for your word this morning, Father. We thank you so much that, that you, you help us to understand, Holy Spirit, that you have been in grace of God. Father, we thank you so much for your grace that is in our life, Father. We pray that you will guide us, Father, to accept that grace, Jesus. Father, for you have accepted us, for you have forgiven us, Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord. We thank you so much for your grace that we don't deserve it, Father, and yet you cease because it is a free gift of yours. Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness in our life and for your goodness, Father God, in our life, Jesus. We pray, we continue to praise and your amazing grace, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love and your grace, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and we pray. Amen. We'll come back next week with even more deeper about grace of God that we will be able to understand even deeper. Yeah, so come back next week prepared, your heart and your notes, your ears, yeah.